and now we're going to look at types of uh, leaves remember we said uh, these leaves are of two types um are from our primary four if you remember so uh, from primary four we said one we have two types of leaves one we had what we call simple uh, leaves and two uh, we also discussed what we call the compound uh, leaves now here we are having different types of leaves but when you look at these types of leaves here they are under one type of leaves and these ones they are under what you call a simple uh, leaves so what is a simple leaf so a simple leaf let us start with the simple leaves uh, so and we define this so a simple leaf is a leaf with only one leaflet so it has one leaflet on one leaf stalk so a simple leaf is a type of a leaf with only one leaflet on one main leaf stalk now when we look at this leaf this is the main leaf stalk this one is the main a uh, leaf stalk then when we look at this one all of this it is a leaflet so it is one leaflet on one leaf stalk so this one is a simple leaf then again when we look at this simple leaf also we have we are seeing here the main leaf stalk then carrying all this leaf this is one leaflet but is divided into portions then we look at this one has the main leaf stalk here and is a one leaflet so uh, therefore the definition as of a simple leaf so it's a leaf once again with only one leaflet on one leaf stalk so let us look at now examples of these simple leaves as you are seeing them here now number one here this one is called simple serrated it is called what simple serrated this one is sound, uh, sounded as serrated so serrated means teeth so it has teeth its margin is toothed so it has a toothy margin if we try to draw this one uh, this is the leaf stalk the main leaf stalk then its margin it has teeth so it is toothed then it comes like this one like this so it has teeth then it joins now this one becomes these are the teeth so it, it is serrated this one is a simple a serrated a leaf uh, when we come to this one uh, another example example two we are having this diagram here number two so this one is simple lobed so lobed means wave it's, it has waves so it is has wave like leaf margin so if i'm to draw this is simple lobed it has has a wave margin it is not toast like this one but it is just a wave so this is simple lobed uh-huh uh, apart from the simple serrated this one and the simple lobed this one then we are having this so this one is simple divided entire this is simple divided entire so this is a cassava leaf so it is a simple leaf but now it is divided into portions that's a name simple divided in enter then when we come again uh, 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 to, to this one uh, this one is like our palms so uh, this is a leaf stock the main leaf stock then this is the leaflet so it is divided uh, in form of the palm so this is our uh, this one is called simple palmet uh, it is simple simple palmet s is for simple so this is simple Parliament. So uh, these are the examples of simple leaves. Um, simple palmate, simple divided entire, simple serrated, simple lobed, and this one is also simple divided enter. So this is simple serrated once again, simple lobed, and we said lobe means a wave like a margin. Then this is simple divided entire and simple parliament. So this simple parliament is commonly found in uh, in purple plants so the purples have simple leaves uh, with a palmate like structure this, uh -huh. so here we are uh, please uh, uh, pay attention uh, so that we continue uh -huh. so here we are we are now going to look at another type of leaves and this is the compound leaves so as you said uh, that simple leaves they have one leaf stalk uh, I mean they have one leaflet on one leaf, leaf stalk then what how about the compound leaves and uh, then these compound leaves they have very many they have many uh, leaflets on one leaf stalk so they have very many 
leaflets on one leaf stock and now let us look at examples one we are going to start with what we call the compound trifoliate remember from our word bank we looked at that trifoliate and we said tri means three and foliate means a uh, leaflet so uh, this one this simple leaf has uh, three leaflets this is the main leaf stalk and uh, then this main leaf stalk is going to divide into a small leaf stalk uh, then it is going to form a leaflet this is one leaf then uh, from here it's now going to continue and forms another one like this so this is the second one then it is going to continue and makes the third one so this one is what we call a compound trifoliate and this one is a characteristic of a uh, bean plants so all bean plants they have a compound trifoliate so there are three three leaves on one main leaf stalk so when we come to this diagram to the pictures here this picture here it is showing us the compound trifoliate and then from there let us look at another one and uh, this is the compound digitate a uh, compound digitate so compound digitate these are uh, this range from four to five leaflets for example uh, if this is our um, a main leaf stalk then it's going to branch and forms a leaflet here then even here it forms this one then it continues and forms another leaflet then even here forms another leaflet then it forms another leaflet so one two three four five they are either four or five in number thus they form compound digitate and this one is mainly found in ground nut plants so ground nuts nut plants they have a compound digitate so in this picture uh, the picture is here so this is a compound digitate so this one is showing us compound digitate leaf so uh, another example of a compound leaf is compound pinnate compound what pinnate so we have said we have compound trifoliate compound digitate then we are going to look at another one as compound pinnate so uh, with a compound pinnate this is our main leaf stalk uh -huh. then on this main leaf stalk is going to have to, to produce other small leaf stalks which we call the ranches then uh, this one is going to form a leaflet it's going to carry a leaflet then this one is going to carry a leaflet even this one carries a leaflet then pinnate means in opposite direction so these are small leaflet li li leaves or our small leaflets so they are opposite to each other so this arrangement that is what we call the pinnate arrangement and this one becomes the compound pinnate and the best example is uh, acacia plant which we call uh, which bears yellow flowers so acacia plants they do have compound pinnate then from there we are going to get what we call compound by pinnate so the pine this is the pinnate and the diagram uh, from these pictures representing this diagram it is this one here so this one here it is a compound pinnate this is a compound pinnate and we've said this is compound trifoliate and now this is compound digitate then we are going to look at what to call the compound by pinnate and this one is mainly found in uh, in uh, in sorry 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 here this one it's not the cassia this one is found in jacaranda uh, jacaranda that is omusambia then uh, this pi by pinnate is found in acacia plants then what how are they arranged what's the arrangement then here we are having our main leaf stock then this main leaf stock is going to produce another leaf stock and again this other leaf stock then we get another one here and another one here now these other minor leaf, leaf these leaf stock these leaf stocks um uh, leaf stocks formed from here they are also going to form other ranches remember we said a ranches uh, it is a smaller leaf stock carrying a leaflet now this one is a ranches carrying this leaflet and this one carrying this one then this one carrying this one <coughs> then this one with this one then we continue this one carries this leaf stock and this one and that then even this one is going to carry this then this one carries this one then this one produces this then we continue then this one with this and then that one then we get this one then this with this so we have here then this with this one with this one so this one with this and then here then this one carries this 
and this so now when we look at this arrangement and uh, this is what we call a bi pinet so we are having pinets and each pinet is opposite to each other thus bi bi means two like the die so here there are two pinets opposite to each other thus compound by pinet therefore compound leaves examples are the pinet leaf uh, the bi pinet the digitate and the trifoliate and this one is commonly said this one is found in a bean plants and the digitate is commonly found in ground nutty plants so now let us continue uh, but please i urge you to have a good handwriting and a good listening uh -huh. so now here we are now going to look at or we are now looking at what we call uses of leaves to plants uses of leaves uses of leaves to plants uh -huh. so one um uh, these leaves are very important to both plants and also animals then but to plants uh, these leaves help these plants to carry out to transpiration so that what you are seeing there is transpiration but some of you pronounce it wrongly you pronounce it as transpiration it's not transpiration the word is transpiration so yeah um, briefly uh, this word transpiration means the process by which these plants lose water they don't lose excess water but they lose water once they are heated so the process by which these plants lose water into the atmosphere then as you are seeing here we are having a leaf here so we are having the small openings which we called the stomata and now we are seeing a water vapor coming out from a leaf so the stomata have opened then the water is coming out so that process is called a uh, transpiration so this process is very important to a plant in a way that it enables the plant one to cool so it cools the plant it's like when we animals we people sweat so for us we sweat but the plants don't sweat they carry out a uh, transpiration once they have a lot of heat inside them and again this process it enables these plants to absorb more water to absorb more water and mineral salts uh, to absorb more water and mineral salts from the soil uh, as you are seeing this is the soil so one of the one of the components of soil is soil water and uh, so uh, the plants are taking up the plant roots are taking up water from uh, the soil by the process called osmosis so this is or uh, now here we are seeing osmosis what is entering the plant roots then this water is going to rise up the stem then the process by which what by which this water is rising up the stem i uh, remember it is moving against the gravity so that process is called capillary attraction so it is the process by which uh, water is moving up the stem so the process by which the roots are picking water from the soil is osmosis then it moves up by capillary attraction on reaching the leaf stalk then uh, it's going to be uh, sent to the leaf uh, to the leaf midrib then the midrib sends it to the veins then the veins to every part of a leaf then once this plant is overheated or it is just heated and the heat is too much inside it then it is going to lose that heat in form of water vapor then the process called it transpiration so one of the uses of leaves to plant is that leaves help plants to carry out transi so another use apart from transpiration we are seeing this part here so guess what this is so this one it is what we call the stoma so this is an open stoma when there are very many uh, we call them the stomata therefore uh, this means that plants uh, leaves help plants to breathe but we don't say that plant leaves um uh, plants use leaves to breathe that's wrong we say leaves hold stomata for plants to breathe uh, leaves hold stomata used by plants to breathe by plants we don't say plants use leaves to breathe ah they don't use leaves just leaves hold the stomata that are used by plants to breathe so uh, this when we when it's one we call it a stoma when they're very many we call them stomatas so do, we, we call them stomata we don't call them a stomata so it is uh, wrong to say leaves hold stomatas used by plants to breathe so they're not stomatas they're just a stomata stomata 
and again apart from that function that use then we are having also this diagram so this diagram is showing a process of photo a synthesis meaning that uh, these leaves make food for a plant and that process by which uh, they are making food is called photo a synthesis um they are uh, with help of water from the soil and carbon dioxide in the presence of sunlight trapped by the chlorophyll then during this process uh, we are going to get oxygen so meaning that during the process of photosynthesis plants take in carbon dioxide and release oxygen therefore um the use becomes a photosynthesis so leaves help plants or leaves carry out photosynthesis or make food for a plant and then we have what we call modified uses of leaves modified uses are these are the other uses performed by leaves to a plant we have the basic uses the primary uses that is transpiration as we have discussed photosynthesis and gaseous exchange by the stomata then we have other uses these ones are called modified uses after performing the three then the uh -huh, one uh, we are looking at uh, these green green vegetables one this is uh, this is lettuce this is uh, we are having cauliflower then we have hmm? Uh -huh. So here we are having um, uh, leafy vegetables. So we eat all these. So we are eating leaves. Why do we eat leaves? It means that now uh, these leaves are storing food for a plant. So one of the modified leaves, modified functions or uses of leaves to a plant is that uh, they store, they store food for a plant. So they store food for a plant, and not only food but also water, like the cactus in deserts. Then we have onions; they are storing food in their swollen fleshy leaves then when we look at cabbages they're storing food in their uh, leaves we have uh, a spinach also stores food in its uh, leaves uh, therefore a function uh, it has been modified they trap they count photosynthesis after they store that food so that one becomes a modified function or a second function then here we have another plant so these leaves when you observe them critically we are seeing thorns so why do you think they have thorns so they have these thorns in order to protect uh, to protect the plant so some leaves uh, protect uh, 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 the plants on which they are found so some leaves have thorns others have uh, spines and others are sharp so they can cut so why in order to protect the hmm uh -huh. again still we are moving on with modified functions then here we are seeing this diagram it is uh, familiar to you or not uh, it is if it's not familiar this one's called boreophyllum it is called boreophyllum so this leaf is used during vegetative Propagation, meaning that some you, some leaves are used for propagation. Sorry, it is vegetative, vegetative propagation, and propagation it means a way how crops are grown. So now some plants are grown using leaves, as you are seeing. So this leaf has a node. Once you put this leaf um uh, uh, in a moist uh, in a moist area, then these nodes are going to develop into younger seeds a younger s into seedlings as you are seeing then you break off the seedling and you plant it thus vegetative propagation then other leaves are modified into le into flowers so they have bright colors to attract pollinators meaning that some leaves are modified into petals to attract pollinators to attract pollinators like this you are seeing over here uh, now le lastly let us look at uses of leaves to people so these leaves are very important to a uh, man as you are seeing in these pictures uh in this picture we are seeing a woman doing something and this is called weaving uh is making a basket 
is making a basket right now we are seeing this man uh, in a garden but he's using leaves to do this activity and this activity is called think about it now and also we are seeing these ladies they are in a village and they are trying to finish up their hat so what is this activity so now or when you compare all these three all these people are making use of leaves therefore these leaves are very important to a uh, people one in this picture number one uh, we are seeing ladies thatching a house meaning that leaves are used to thatch houses especially the huts in villages and again here we can see this man in the garden carrying out mulching so uh, leaves are used as mulches so they are used in mulching to cover the topsoil to prevent it from being taken by running water then leaves are also used to make a uh, handcrafts they are used uh, to make handicrafts by weaving them for example baskets we can take uh, an example of mats and also the hats worn by <laughs> worn by people mm -hmm. and again we have other uses of leaves people uh, one uh, these leaves can be used as herbal medicine yeah like the mululuza the bombo and so on and again these leaves can be eaten by man and also these leaves can be prepared as pasture for our animals therefore uh, this one marks the end of our lesson for today you've been a good learner so those as well who joined us please try to check um uh, for the links for the previous videos so that you catch up with us and i urge you a uh, please uh, always uh, to write the notes that are given in the links very soon so uh, let us meet in the next video in the, i mean sorry in the next lesson uh, may god bless